pleasant. Good afternoon to everyone. And let me say welcome to the Cassius Youth Enterprise Center. For us to start officially, I'm going to call on one of our trainees, um, Miss Scotland, to open us with prayer. Well then. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. God has been indeed good to us, especially the trainees here. So let us just give him praise. Let us pray. To know, Father, we just want to thank you for being so good to us. You deserve all the praise. And so this afternoon, dear Lord, whatever will be transpired here, we ask you to be first and foremost in it all. Bless us and we pray that you enjoy everything here to the fullest. With us all, it is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So, on behalf of the youth officer, Ms. Nikki Daru, and myself, and our instructor, Ms. Mariana Sanford, would like to officially welcome the STP team, um, the other youth officers, to the Cash Receive Enterprise Center. Uh, we are happy to have you all, and we are hoping that whatever our trainees have learned for the past four months, that they will be able to display and you will have a better understanding of what was taught. So again, welcome to the Cash Receive Enterprise Center. Without further ado, I will call on the officer, Miss Youth Officer, Miss Nikki Daru, to give us an overview. Good afternoon to everyone. As Anna's Minister said, welcome to the Task Force of Enterprise Center. Um, we are happy to have you here this afternoon to, for you to witness. Uh, what the young people from the district have done. We all skills training program is an opportunity for young people to gain employable skills to improve their sales and their livelihoods. Today our open day will showcase our digital our digital literacy training and what the students have learned um, for the past the past several months. Okay? And also, you will get a chance to interact with them, to ask questions, to get their feel and their experience of the program. Our objectives, our goal for the purpose for the open day is to promote our skills training program, as we said, and to also give you the public an opportunity to see and gain hands-on or experience of what the young people have done. So we are thankful for that. Our whole skills training program in class really started with a really with a full class, we must say. And over time, for circumstances beyond our control, our control dwindled to the few students that you see here today. However, they are committed students, and we are thankful that they endured through the four months, through their challenges, and they it through to the end of the program. We are thankful for them, and I would like to give them your full attention and your full appreciation for the skills that they have developed, and also for what they are going to show you as well. So thank you so much, and again, welcome to our open day. As Mrs. Darrow is saying that our programs are due development division, they are holistic programs. So not only that we touch on the computer, aspect of course we do the social skills aspect where our trainees um, do soft skills so we equip them with of course learning to maybe do their powerpoint presentation but we also assist them in learning how to answer the phone and how to be able to work with people that will be sending most of them or some of them on job attachment Without further ado, I would like to call our instructor, Ms. Mariana Sanford Stout, to give us a, mod a literacy module review. Let us put our hands together for our instructor. Staff of the Youth Development Division, Youth Officers, 
invited guests, trainees. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, okay, the computer literacy training began here at the Task Research Center on the 29th of January. Actually, we started a little bit late because we were trying to um, get students together so that we could start the model. So we started on the 29th of January um, with approximately 92 mil and seven teammates. I must confess that the four months of training was a tremendous one. So we delved into the concepts of IT, um, how to operate a personal computer, Microsoft Word, basic and advanced, Excel, basic and advanced, access, publisher, PowerPoint. Um, we also did access the internet and the different terminologies. And uh, lastly, we right now, we are towards the end, we are doing QuickBooks Pro 2016. So working with these young people, um, adults and young adults, has been a great experience. So there were times in my absence, um, they, would, they took over the class. They would teach each other to uh, peer teaching. And also, I really admire the bond that they created. So they would look out for each other. So I must say to the youth organization, the body system did work and it is working. Okay? So they are looking out for each other and um, keeping each other in check. Um, overall, despite our challenges, um, we had a whole week without class because of illness, myself being ill, and also transportation and financial issues. So most of them, some of them were unable to attend class. But however, we succeeded, and I must admit that the knowledge and skills that I imparted on them, um, they are ready to display their knowledge and skills for you this afternoon. So it has um, transformed them into well-rounded individuals. Thank you. Again, we just want to say thanks to Ms. Sanford for doing an excellent job for our trainees over the years. Without further ado, I will call Ms. Frederick to give the vote of thanks, one of our trainees. Ms. Frederick. in agriculture introduction technology in agriculture also known as e-agriculture focuses on the enhancement of agriculture and rural development through improved information and communication processes for both crops and livestock production 
Farming today requires the integration of sophisticated technologies such as temperature and moisture sensors, robots, GPS, technology and aerial images to name a few. Agriculture is also crucial to economic growth. Therefore, with improved technology, we can also improve production significantly. So normally, when we hear the term computer and agriculture, most of us might be thinking of um, the soil, you might be thinking of fertilizers, you might be thinking of seeds. But agriculture has evolved so much and now we upgrade to new technology and uh, we will give you a few like the GPS, drones, um, smart irrigation being used during agriculture processes. The first drones. A drone is re it refers to any unpiloted aircraft or manned aerial vehicles. In agriculture, it is used for crop mapping, crop spraying, chemical application, monitoring crop stress, etc. And then you can see the drone being used to spread vegetables. Extension officer on drone training oh. and drone mapping a plot in KT. GPS imagery and satellite. GPS Global Positioning System. It's a satellite based radio navigation system. Information is collected by GPS receivers for mapping field, boundaries, road, irrigation system, etc. Satellite is anything that orbits a planet or a star. This information helps scientists predict weather and climate. It helps farmers know what crops to plant. So, for example, Right now we're in the hurricane season. We already know what to plant and when to plant because we know the hurricane season coming, we're going to get flooding for those of us on the east. So we know um, last week a farmer came and said he has um, watermelon. So he needs to harvest it before the hurricane season. So if using that satellite, um, governments, officials, and the people in the weather station they're able to give us a more precise prediction of the weather and focus so we can know when to plant and so on gps in our area we normally use gps to measure farmers plots so if you have three acres instead of walking all around that three acres one of the extension officers can use their gps and give you a precise location for example, in the Kalinago territory, they do not have land titles. So our extension officers would use their GPS and get the precise amount of farm land measurements. And then that document is being signed by the Kalinago chief. Next. Precision. Livestock farming. It is an innovative approach that utilizes technology and data driven solutions to optimize livestock production and management. It involves the irrigation of sensors, automation, and monitoring system to gather real time information on animal health, behavior, and environmental conditions. Okay, so that also can be used to tag your animal. Maybe some of you who went to the livestock farm at um, Marigot and we noticed some animal with a tag on their ear. So that mark it helps. You can measure the animal and get to know information about the animal, their health. Also, you can monitor temperature to know when it's. And also, some people use it. Um, for favor. Yeah. 
Smart irrigation. Smart irrigation uses weather data or soil moisture data to determine the irrigation needing of the landscape. Smart irrigation technology includes reducing water, water waste while maintaining plant health and quality. So with smart irrigation, you don't need to be on the farm. You can program your irrigation. It used to come at 12, it's at 6, whatever time you want. And it waters your plant, you don't have to be there. Now, there are disadvantages and advantages in computer in agriculture. Now, let's look at the disadvantages. Disadvantages are limited human interaction, technology difficulties, costly mistakes, cost of implement implementation, lack of education among farmers, data security concerns, Hacked information, reduction in employment opportunities. The advantages are increased crop production, reduction in overload, as well as reduction in communication, efficient data management, um, precise, precision farming techniques, Enable data collection, analyzing and decision making related photos, real time monitoring capabilities, cost effect resources, cost effect resource utilization, improved livestock health. Conclusion. Farmers and IT professionals together should contribute to the development of a user-friendly system which uses local language. The positive attributes of the technology can be widely used in the farming sector in Dominica or worldwide to contribute to sustainable and productive farming practices as safeguard and food security. Farmers and always contact the extension staff for assistance. Mm. So here we have our information. You can contact us at the center across there or at the Kalina FSS. And um, sometimes we have constraints, but we still try our best to assist farmers. Right now, there are many ongoing projects. To name a few, we have the SIRT project. If you cannot be part, maybe your parents or somebody in your family, we have the post harvest, the harvest and the post harvest. We're asking farmers to please come and apply. We have a project also for the farmers under the same SIRT. Um, let us continue to support agricultural sector. Agriculture can reduce poverty, especially in the rural area. It will increase our income. And without agriculture on a whole, our food security is at stake. So let us enhance that new technology, at least to improve our yields and to make farming better, not for the farmers, but for all of us, all stakeholders. Thank you.
So if any of uh, you officers or 4-H coordinator, the STP team, anybody want to ask our trainers questions, or you can take a view of the table at the front, where our trainers have linked to, to their postcards and their business cards, so you can ask questions. But uh, before we do all of this, uh, please remember we have our book to sign and another trainee would like to demonstrate something, so we're going to put this out. Miss Sylvia is going to show us a few things that she has learned. Also, we want to welcome the parents who are giving support to their, to their children, to their trainees. <laughs> Maybe our boyfriends or husbands who are here to give us support. <laughs> so it must be a husband. So we are grateful that you took time off. Your busy schedule to be part of us here today. Sylvia? Okay, let's read it. Take it away. Okay, she's going to do a watermark. And a watermark is a ghosted text in a document to protect confidential information and to indicate the validity of a legal document. So that's what you're going to demonstrate. Okay, so we would, you go to the, the sign down, you see what the map here and press it. I have different um, confidential demonstrate a macros and a macros is a series of commands and instructions that you group together as a single command to accomplish a task automatically. Okay, so you go to insert tab, you go and press they have created. So let us welcome Miss Henry and Miss Frederick. Introduction 
is what is drug trafficking. So criminal networks of which arrange traffic a range of drugs, some of which we know and some we do not know. And the main intention of trafficking the drug is to make money. Do you agree? Yes. Okay.
carried from blueprint for drugs. We have like 40% of the drug that goes to America um, passes through CARICOM countries. Next, please. Consequences of transporting of drug trafficking. Long prison sentences and heavy fines. We also have loss of assets. All the assets you acquired, they can be lost. We have your home, your car, or the personal properties. It exposes you to harmful substances, so you put your health at risk. There's a stigma on your family. People might say, oh, that family deals with drugs. And in the end, most time it ends in violence. Somebody dies. Drug trafficking in Dominica. The prime drug markets in Dominica are cocaine and cannabis trade. Dominica is a transit country for both destinations, for other Caribbean islands, North America or Europe. Venezuelan boats enter Dominica territory and transfer cocaine to local fishing boats into Dominica. And here you can see a drug bus. <laughs> and in here, that's drug. They're preparing to be built, and they, that's where it's set on fire. So lately, we have seen a few, or read about a few statistics about drugs. On May 1st, 2004, 510 kilograms valued at $13 million was confiscated. January 23rd again, we had 57, 572 kilogram, a street value of $25,000. Reggae and Castle Bruce, we had 1,532 1, pounds of cocaine, a street value of $18,800,000. $800,720. 37 pounds of cannabis, a street value of $74. Ways to meet, mitigate drug trafficking. So it's something that not only Dominica has to do, but is a collaborative effort. All regional and international law enforcement bodies need to work together. Two, global operation against drug trafficking and assistance on ongoing investigation. Comprehensive training for police to better tackle drug trafficking. Next slide. In conclusion, because of resources constraint, also widespread corruption, a lack of political will, and handicapped efforts to combat drug trafficking in Dominica and throughout the world. Effort to combat drug trafficking requires all of us to participate, including law enforcement, education, international cooperation mm -hmm. authorities must work collaboratively to tackle this problem and protect citizens from harmful effects of drug related activities right here we have samples so this is a sample of some cannabis <laughs> police <laughs> Here we have a tobacco, 
what you use as high relief. That's a plant that we used to spy for when the pool is coming. <laughs> <laughs> and this has our GPS. So, yes. Mm. And that represents the police fighting against drug trafficking. <laughs> so, the, yeah. so, this is the end of our presentation. For reference, you can go through these sites. <laughs> I send this to Hyma, and she's going to open it by control. Okay? No Hyma can see. This is the right that I want.
Since we are shown that this is the website address, turns blue, control, and click, and take <laughs> Publications there as in how they did it, and they will demonstrate for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we are at the Campus for the Youth Field Screening Program, and we are going to interact with a few of the trainees. This is to find out their reasons for coming to this training program. Anybody wants to tell me why they chose to come to this training program? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Anyone Please. What do you say? No? <laughs> no? Okay, well. That's it for us from Tassie Bruce, everyone. Why did you choose to come to this training program? Well, I came to this program actually by default. Um, I was on vacation. When I came back, somebody was asking me about the forms I collected. So when I inquired, I found out it was forms for um, attending the program here. My other good colleagues were part of it. So I decided to be part of it as well. And um, in the end, most of them did not make it through due to other commitments, but I stayed and I'm happy I did. And can you tell us, you work at the agricultural station? Yes, I do. And can you tell us how you are going to use, how do you see yourself using what you learned here? in your job? Okay, well, this is something I was already doing, but um, coming here, we did some stuff like Excel Advance, we did um, data um, access, something that was new to me. So I'm going to use it to, when I'm filing farmers' documents and um, Mail leadership when we are doing um, invitations and so on, we can use that. Good job. I must say thanks to Miss Stott. She was a very good tutor. And to my other class colleague, um, thanks for bonding. We did well. And I'm proud of them. I was exempted from social skills. And how did, how did, um, what time was your classes? Um, from 1 p.m. to 4. Okay. Yes. So that means that persons who work in the morning are able to come. Yes. Okay, so what would you like to Normally say? Normally they have um, two sessions, um, from 9 to 12 and mm -hmm. 1 to 4. So what would you say to other persons, especially older persons who are in the, 
in the um, public and are not seeing the need to take such classes. You know, like some women who say, oh, but I will already. I don't need to go and learn computers. What would you say to them? What advice would you give them? Learning computers has no age limit. I mean, um, technology evolves. Um, most of us or people nowadays, their family, they're abroad. You can use this technology to communicate wherever you're working. Um, in your community as well. So again, as we presented on um, agriculture and farming as a family, you can also use technology for your farm data. So I would encourage farmers, people from the East, um, to come register for next class, which will be in September, Miss Fox. Yes. So registration is open as of today. What is our message for, because a number of young men would say, for example, oh, that thing, that computer literacy course is for, is for women, as a woman thing. What message would you have for them as one who have done the course? Okay, it is not for women only. We have people like Mr. Cassius Darrow. Due to um, ill health, he's only able to be here for us today. He was there and he was doing very well. So um, his main reason, he said, was for coming there. He has a child, so he would like to help his daughter to do her homework. So, Sometimes you come to this session not for yourself but to assist others. So I'd encourage them to register. Thank you very much. So at this time we'll just go and show you some of the brochures produced by the trainees. And again, we see that quite a few of the family members have come up to support them. And we are so happy for that. So here we see their birthday cards that they have done. And also the calendar is, has become a staple in the youth division. Um, in the youth division <laughs> activities. We also see brochures. And I know sometimes tourist vendors require yes. these things i mean these look like they were made overseas so this is something else that you can do you can have the trainees do this for you and then you can sell them in your own businesses and if there are any business persons in need of business cards you can have a trainees from the youth division division doing this for you so we are saying goodbye from cassie bruce and this is it for Open Day 2024. We thank you for joining and we thank you for spreading the word to other young persons that they may also participate in the skills training program of the Dominica Youth Division. So from Cassie Bruce, we are saying goodbye everyone and thanks for joining.